Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a hemostat ice dye. Start by centering your shirt. For this pattern, I want it to be only on the front of the shirt. So now I'm isolating out the front of the shirt and that's what's at the bottom of the screen. And then the back of the shirt is everything that's up at the top of the screen. I made a little mark where I want the center of my design to be. And then I'm going to fold it from the bottom up to the top. And then I'm just going to airplane fold it. So I'm, now I'm going to fold from the top down to the bottom, holding on to the center point and repeat that one more time and then flip it over and do it again on the other side. Now I like to secure it with some type of a clip. If you've done it correctly, you're going to have five folds on the top and two on the bottom. Using a washable marker, I mark out where I want my pattern to stop. I have three different sizes of hemostats, 12 inch, 10 inch, and eight inch, and I have links for them down below in the description box. I'm starting off my design by using a straight hemostat, and I decided to flip the shirt over and go at it on the side that only had the two folds instead of the five folds, but I don't think it really matters. So now using the 8 inch curved hemostat, I'm going to start putting the petals on the design and take note of the placement of the hemostats. And you really want to click them down as tight as you possibly can. Using a washable marker, I'm just creating a guide for the hemostats. So the first two, if you're noticing my placement, I put the first hemostat on so it's touching the straight hemostat. Then the second curved hemostat I put so it's touching the first hemostat. And now look at how I'm placing them. I'm putting them in line with each other, but only putting them in halfway. Gosh, this is like so hard to explain. I just know what I'm doing, but I can't explain it. 
And then also I'm creating just a little bit of distance between them. So with every row of petals, I'm just going just a little bit further out, making them bigger. Now for the rest of the shirt, it's just going to be a simple scrunch. So you wanna take a little bit of time to undo all those folds. And then when you do your scrunches, I like to do the tall peaks and low valleys because I feel like it gives more of that watercolor effect. Hemostats can make things a little bit awkward. I don't really have a container that's big enough, wide enough to accommodate all the hemostats. So what I did was I took one of the lasagna pans and I flipped it over and then I set the other lasagna pan on top of that. And then as you can see, I put my rack on top of that. And now I'm building myself um, an ice barrier out of tin foil.
hindsight is 2020, and you'll see at the end. I wish I wouldn't have put this last set of hemostats. It made the design just a little bit too big. And secondly, I wish that I wouldn't have put so much imperial purple right here. It's just a little too dark. And then for this next part where you're going to be creating the watercolor area, just have fun with it. I'm doing the dye under eyes technique, and so just sprinkle some dyes around. You know, pick any colors that you like. I'm going with the purple and green combo. This has been quite a bit of work, so for good measure, I'm going to add a little extra soda ash just to make sure the pH of the shirt stays up around 10.5 to 11, and then I'm going to add the ice. You want to batch the project for 24 to 48 hours after the ice melts. After the ice melted, I came back and I checked it and it had good saturation on both sides, so I didn't do anything more to it. I did let it batch for the full 48 hours. Our temperatures are a little bit cooler now, so I wanted to make sure that it had full vibrancy. So like I said, it's been 48 hours and now it's time for the rinse out. You wanna start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol, which is called Kirilon on Dharma's website if you're looking for it. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft, 
to bring softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And that's not a necessary step, but I really like it. It makes things feel nice and soft. And then I put it in the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. So you might be looking at this right now thinking, oh my gosh, that is just so dark. Yeah, I do that too. And don't do that to yourself. You never know what it's going to look like until after it's washed and dried. It's going to look completely different. Well, here it is, guys. Here's our hemostat ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I'm very happy with this shirt. Remember how I said that I wish I wouldn't have added that last row of hemostats? And now you can see why. I do feel like it's just a little bit too big for this shirt. And then adding that imperial purple just makes it look even bigger. Now, I also do think that I over dyed this shirt a little bit. You know, I don't think I needed quite so much of the purples to get the saturation. So it does look a little bit oversaturated but it's still really beautiful. It reminds me of a dahlia flower. And then the watercolor on the back is just gorgeous to me. I absolutely love the greens and the purples together. I almost wish that I would have had a little bit more of the greens um, because the, there's so much of the purple on the front. I wish I would have had more of the greens on the back. But that's okay, you know, you live and you learn, and you know, next time I'll do a few things differently. So what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. This tutorial ended up being rather long, so I thought, what the heck, for those of you that stuck around to the very end, I'd give you a little bonus and share with you some of my dahlia inspiration. So I can go out into the garden and look at these and get inspiration for tie dye. And I find myself a lot of times going out into nature and getting inspiration, like the Aurora Borealis and you know, stuff like that. So if you're ever interested in growing dahlias, you can uh, order them online from Swan Island Dahlias. They're out of Canby, Oregon, and I'm pretty sure they're the largest dahlia farm in the United States. That's where I got all of these, and they're absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.